PR Connections Radio presents. Welcome to Vegas Hockey Hub here on PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And on this episode of Vegas Hockey Hub, we are going to be doing once again our Hockey Hub recap show. Unfortunately, it was not the uh, ending that we desired for the Vegas Golden Knights, but still, we have to discuss every single game here on Vegas Hockey Hub. I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And if you want to go to our YouTube channel at PR Connections Radio, we have about a dozen shows on the network, amazing content. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, that would be much appreciated. Or if you want to go to the Vegas Hockey Hub YouTube channel, we're trying to post more content on there. So if you want to hit the like button and share to all of your friends all around the world, that would be much appreciated for Vegas Hockey Hub. We are also on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are everywhere at Vegas Hockey Hub. And if you want to follow me, I'm right down there at Ian Rickelli 18 And then lastly, we are going to be doing some more... Um, we're going to be doing some more videos talking about the rest of the NHL, not just the Vegas Golden Knights. We're going to be trying to do some more content discussing the rest of the NHL, putting out more content as time goes on. So turn on notification bell so you don't miss any content of Vegas Hockey Hub. Now, getting into the game and getting to the pregame notes as we are doing our recap show here today, you we had a lineup change because unfortunately, as you can see right there on the screen, Shea Theodore out with an upper body injury. Very unfortunate, but is what happened in the Dallas game. Shea Theodore, towards the end of the game, was taken out. It was confirmed that he is out with an upper body injury. Caden Korzak, of course, recalled from Henderson. Now, Caden Korzak, he has played some games off and on the last two years with your Vegas Golden Knights. So, for Caden Korzak, him being recalled, you know, a top 10 prospect with the Golden Knights organization. He is going to do really well for Vegas. As it was said in the lineup, with, with the lineup, he will be alongside Braden McNabb on the second line. You also have situation with Alex Trangelo, Nick Haig, Zach Whitecloud, Ben Hutton. That fills out the rest of your defense. And in net, uh, unfortunately, due to the injury that happened to Aiden Hill a few games ago, Logan Thompson once again in net for your Vegas Golden Knights. And to really kick off the game, there really wasn't much to happen in the first period. However, Keaton Colazar takes a unfortunate tripping penalty to Logan Cooley. And I will say with Keaton Colazar, this has actually been probably a bad habit that we have noticed this year, is that he takes unnecessary penalties. Now, there is good penalties and there are bad penalties in hockey. Every once in a while, you'll have a good penalty where you had to go to the box, but it was a good hockey IQ move. It was a decision where, you know, you have to take the penalty in order to avoid something worse. To this, this was just a tripping penalty. It should have not been called. He really shouldn't have done it. So, yeah, tr tripping penalty on Keen Colazar, on Logan Cooley. Just a very unfortunate tripping penalty to begin the game. Now, thankfully, the Arizona Coyotes did not score on this play. So it was actually fortunate that they did not score off the King Colazar penalty here. And then you also had later in the uh, first period, about a half, a half a minute later, you had Sean Dursey, the former LA King. He had a holding penalty on Jack Eichel. And I will say for the Vegas Golden Knights, they unfortunately did not capitalize on the Sean Dursey holding penalty as well. And, there was a scrum to end the first period. Zach Whitecloud, Lawson Cruz, they went to the penalty box. And actually, it was funny. It was about one second left in the first period. There actually was a buzzer that went off as everybody was scrumming on the opposite side of the ice. And to me, it seems like like Cruz really just held Whitecloud. And it was really just him kind of using Whitecloud up. I don't think Whitecloud had anything to do with it, really. But Whitecloud got a roughing penalty. Crows got a high sticking penalty, and that was really the end of the first period. Like I said, it was 0-0 after the first period. There was no scores, nothing to happen really much in the first period. And the second period was kind of the same. Outside of a delay of game penalty with Arizona, you really had no action. There was a few shots that could have gone in for Vegas, but at the end of the day, the first period, 0-0. Second period, 0-0. 
And for Arizona and for Vegas, it just seemed like whoever scores first is probably going to win this game. And after a Michael Amadio slashing penalty on Alex Kerfoot, it seemed like the momentum changed in Arizona's favor. As about a few minutes later, Clayton Keller with his eighth goal of the season for the Arizona Coyotes. And Logan Cooley with the assist, Nick Schmoltz with the assist to make it one nothing. And Clayton Keller has definitely turned into a superstar for Arizona. I mean, this has been a situation where a guy like Clayton Keller and Logan Cooley, who has been one of the best up-and-coming rising stars in hockey, and I will say a line like Keller and Cooley is definitely going to be a cornerstone of Arizona or Houston, maybe in the future. We'll set, We'll talk about that later. And it will definitely be a good line to have if you are the Coyotes with Clayton Keller and Logan Cooley. So with it being one nothing between Arizona and Vegas, um, you definitely had some good opportunities. There actually was a good opportunity by Vegas in the la- in the final two minutes of the game. You also had a shot that could have gone in, but unfortunately just hit the ball, hit the crossbar, and it did not go in. And with about a minute and a half left in the game, the guy who caused that scrum earlier at the end of the first period, Lawson Cruz, got his 10th of goal of the season. You have Nick Nick Bukestad and Mateus Maselli with it, it making it a 2-0 game for the Arizona Coyotes. And that would be the end of the game there. It was really 2-0. And Logan Thompson does get player of the game because it was, really wasn't his fault. Now, those two goals, they just happened to go in. But outside of that, Logan Thompson did relatively well in net. It wasn't his fault. He really had no problem with it. He had a 94% save percentage. So, no, Logan Thompson did a really good job tonight. It just wasn't unfortunate. It just wasn't in the cards for them to win. Now, one negative I will say is that the Vegas Golden Knights did not score. Uh, The Vegas Golden Knights really seemed like they just were not able to get the puck in the back of the net. Now, regardless if that was the goalie that was in net in Arizona, regardless if it was just the offense just not clicking, whatever the situation was, it just seemed like the Vegas Golden Knights just did not do well enough to get the job done for Vegas. And I will say, hopefully it can be turned around. You know, we have a a next couple of games to really figure it out. You have Calgary, you have Edmonton, you have the Vancouver road trip. You know, uh, we'll see what happens there because you have the Canadian road trip, Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver. But it will be fascinating to see how Vegas turns it around because you have a Golden Knights team who right now just isn't doing well enough to put the puck in the back of the net. And the good news for Vegas, though, is that you have 30 points on the year. So you are 14-5-2. Excellent job by Vegas to do what they're doing now. They are 8-2-1 and one at T-Mobile Arena. And it will be very curious to see what happens with Vegas long term. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. Connor Ingram from the Arizona Coyotes has done a really solid job in net. His second career shutout happens against the Vegas Golden Knights. And for a former backup in Nashville, he gets his he gets a starting job in Arizona. And he definitely deserves a promotion. He definitely deserves a raise for the job he has done this year. Uh, Connor Ingram has done amazing. And he was by far the star of the game with Vegas and Arizona. Now, the stats and the kind of the side-by-side, Vegas put up 34 shots on net as opposed to Arizona's 18. The Vegas Golden Knights had 15 uh, hits on the night. Arizona had 10. And Arizona had double the amount of penalties. Arizona had 12. Vegas had 6. And the face-offs, Vegas won 63% of their face-offs. So from a statistic standpoint, Vegas should have won. If you just study the analytics, Vegas had more shots, more hits, took less penalties, won more face-offs. And most of the time when that happens, you are going to win that game. Now, what I will point out, is that the Vegas Golden Knights went 0 for 5 on the power play, which is really unfortunate for Vegas. I mean, this is a Vegas Golden Knights team that excels on the power play. They do excellent when it comes to putting the puck in the back of the net. 
when they have an extra man opportunity. So it's very unfortunate they went 0 for 5 in this game. Now, they went 2 for 2 on the penalty kill, which is excellent, and I have to give props there. You go 2 for 2 on the penalty kill. In fact, Vegas has been one of the best penalty kill units in all of hockey in this season so far. Um, The takeaways and giveaways is actually kind of alarming. Vegas had eight takeaways as opposed to four giveaways. So the Vegas Golden Knights did double the amount of time they took the puck away from Arizona. But once again, it did not uh, amount to putting the puck in the back of the net. So regardless, if that's props to Connor Ingram, which I'm going to be giving it to, is a situation where Vegas just unfortunately just could not get it done when it mattered the most. So I will say when it comes to your Vegas Golden Knights, I really look at it and go, okay, you've had a bit of a slump recently. How are you going to fix it? Now, there's no secret that the Vegas Golden Knights have lost four of their last five games. I mean, this is a Vegas Golden Knights team that, unfortunately, you lost to Washington, you lost to Philly, you lost to Pittsburgh. Now you're losing to Arizona. If it wasn't for the Dallas game that happened recently, you could say that Vegas is doing a, a tough tough skid. But I'm going to look at it positively. It is normally a good thing to have a bit of a skid early in the year because then by the second half of the year, when you're clicking off wins left, right, and center – you're going to forget about the loss you had in game 19 and game 21, right? Like if I'm winning games in game 72, you know, if I'm winning five games in a row, seven games in a row, 10 games in a row, I'm not going to really reflect and care about the games I lost in game 16, 18, and 19, right? Uh, So I will say for Vegas, hopefully this stretch of losing kind of goes away. Because it's very, be- it's actually better to lose early in the year and get that out of your system than lose late in the year and kind of be on a downward spiral heading into the playoffs. So for Vegas, this has been an unfortunate situation. Like I said, ever since they started the road trip back in Washington, they just unfortunately just have not been as efficient on the road. So for your Vegas Golden Knights, let's see what happens in the upcoming future. Now, this upcoming week, they have four games, uh, three of them on the road, one at home. And it'll be very curious to see how Vegas performs on this road trip they're going to be going on. If the Vegas Golden Knights can get, let's just say, four points, or let's say they go two and two, that would be progress. If they go two, one, and one, if you get five points, that would be good. Now, the best case scenario would be to win four games and get eight points. That would be the best case scenario. And worst case scenario is that the skid continues and they lose their next four games and they go 0 for 8. Now, let's stay positive, and I'm going to say realistically, I think they'll go 2-2. Two and two. Um, Just because of the matchups they have, they're going to be going up against some really competitive teams, three of them on the West Coast, one of them on the East Coast. So I will say for your Vegas Golden Knights, I will not be shocked if they go two and two, considering the matchups they have moving forward. Um, the goalie situation with Aiden Hill, we'll see what happens there. But when it comes to your Vegas Golden Knights, um, you know, we'll see what happens. So I will say for your Vegas Golden Knights, Aiden Hill, Logan Thompson will definitely be an interesting situation there. And I will say for the Shea Theodore situation, him being out with upper body injury. Kane Korzak should definitely be able to help out. So I will say with Aiden Hill, um, you know, we'll see how it goes long term. You know, because obviously Aiden Hill had a little bit of an issue, you know, in the recent game. So we'll see what happens there. But hopefully it is no big deal. So I will say for your Vegas Golden Knights, as we were doing our recap show here on Vegas Hockey Hub, I'm your host, Ian Rakelli. And I like what we're seeing in terms of the defense. You know, the offense, we're, we're, there's some issues there. But defensively, there's a lot of stuff you can talk about and you can praise on the defensive end. So for your Vegas Golden Knights, like I said, the next couple of games is going to be a tough stretch for Vegas. And we'll see what happens there. Now, statistically, there's going to be some players that we're going to mention 
that have done well up to this point. Um, Logan Thompson, like I said, he has been, you know, he's about on the end of some very unfortunate losses. But if you actually look at his goals against average and his save percentage, it kind of trumps his win loss record because yes, he lost to Arizona. He lost to Philly. He lost to Washington and he lost to Anaheim. So anytime you look at a goalie who's lost four games in a row, a lot of people are going to assume that that is a negative, but actually I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to say, look, when it comes to Logan Thompson, his losses kind of don't show the whole picture because he's had some overtime losses. He has had yes, some regulation losses, but that's because um, they've put up, you know, 38 shots on net. He, he saves 36 of them. So I will say for Logan Thompson, definitely be interesting to see what happens there. And as we are talking about, our Vegas Hockey Hub recap show here on on PR Connections Radio. I'm your host, Ian Kelly. And even getting over to the Henderson Silver Knights side of it, there is some good conference, conversation we could talk about with Henderson because of the game that happened recently. So if anybody who doesn't know, the Henderson Silver Knights are AHL affiliate of the Vegas Golden Knights. And their most recent game that went down, they actually played against the uh, Tucson Roadrunners. This will be a back-to-back kind of situation. And the Henderson Silver Knights fell in this game. They lost 3-2. to two. And this was at the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson here in Nevada. Now, the Tucson Roadrunners, they took a 1-0 lead in the first period. And then um, they took a 2-0 lead towards the end of the second period. So... The Henderson Silver Knights being down 2-0 to zero in the second period kind of reminisce of what was going on with Vegas. Now, funny enough, they were taking on the AHL affiliate of Arizona, and that is Tucson. So Tucson taking on Henderson, Vegas taking on Arizona, kind of fitting. Now, Brendan Bryson, the former first-round pick, he scored the first goal of the game for the Henderson Silver Knights to make it a 2-1 situation. Their top prospect, Lucas Cormier, he actually passed the puck over to Bryson, brought it into the offensive zone, and got it past the Tucson Roadrunners and made it a 2-1 game out there in Henderson. And then, a few minutes later, Gregory Diancinko tied the game up at 2. Caden Korzak, you know, Giannis Roundbeard, you know, there were some good situations there. But what I liked about it and what I really could appreciate about it is that you had Giannis Roundbeard. You also had Diancinko. He buried the goal from the left point. And I will say for Henderson, there was some good back and forth there. Now, when it came to the end of the game, Tucson unfortunately scored a goal with about seven minutes left and made it a 3-2 to two game. There was no scoring back on that end, and it was a 3-2 game. Now, there is a back-to-back. There's going to be a game tomorrow against Tucson. That's definitely going to be a good matchup there. So while Vegas is preparing to be back on the road, Henderson will be at home in Henderson at the Dollar Loan Center against Tucson. And, you know, one thing that's kind of going to get lost with Henderson is the announcement that came out very recently, and that was... And that was the report that they were going to do their military appreciation. And when they actually had those uniforms, somebody said that they could bid on it. So that's a good information there. So for the Henderson Silver Knights, there's some good back and forth that we are seeing on that end. And with the calendar of what's going on with Henderson, the upcoming games, you're going to have the Bakerfield Condors uh, in uh, next week. They're going to have Calgary back to back. That is going to be some good situations there. So you have Bakersfield and Calgary at home against Henderson. Then they're going to start their five-game road trip in California, taking on the trio of teams in California, Ontario, San Jose, and San Diego. So for the Henderson Silver Knights, there's a lot we could talk about, a lot of praise that we could say there. Dean Senko has been a, an excellent waiver claim for the Vegas Golden Knights in the AHL. Brennan Bryson and Lucas Cormier, the two you know, kind of main prospects a lot of people are talking about out there in Henderson. And yes, there's been a lot of good positive stuff we could be talking about with that team. And even the ECHL affiliate, the Savannah Ghost Pirates, 
there is some stuff that we could be talking about on that front as well, because the last the last week for Savannah, you have had um, the Orlando the Orlando Solar Bears. They lost two to one against them. They lost a grueling seven to three loss against Atlanta, and then recently against Jacksonville, lost four to one. Now they're going to have a game series against Orlando in the beginning of next week. And then they're going to have a back-to-back-to-back game against South Carolina and Atlanta to kind of start out next month. So Savannah's going to do, you know, they've kind of gone a little bit of a downward spiral, but they'll pick it back up. Similar to Vegas. Vegas is losing a couple of games, and they'll turn it around no problem. And I will say with Henderson, they've had some back and forth. They lose some games, and then they win some games. It's part of hockey. It happens. So for your Vegas Golden Knights, it's going to definitely be interesting to see what happens long term. And I will also say that the Shea Theodore upper body injury, um, it's going to be really interesting to see how long he's going to be out. Because normally when someone says upper body injury, that could mean a concussion, that could mean a shoulder, that could mean, you know, an elbow, you know, that could mean uh, there's a multitude of stuff. That could be an upper body injury. Now, hopefully, the long term effect is that he comes back soon. You know, hopefully, Shea Theodore is not out for a long time because this is the same Shea Theodore that is the best offensive defenseman that Vegas has. He has been one of the best defensemen in terms of shooting the puck in all hockey. So I will say for Shea, hopefully, he is not out long term. That would definitely crush. The Vegas Golden Knights. And of course, you have Braden Bahal, you have Kaden Korzak. They've done a pretty stand up job being in a fill in role. Ben Hutton has already done a pretty good job. We all we all know about the Alec Martinez injury that happened a few games ago. So I will say for Alec Martinez, he's out. Shea Theodore, he's out. Defensively, it will be good to see how they do long term because you have Ben Hutton, you have Braden Bahal, you have Kaden Korzak. Then you have the main three, which is McNabb, White Cloud, and Haig on your roster. So as we are doing our recap show here on Vegas Hockey Hub, I'm just going to kind of preview some upcoming shows for you. Uh, we have the player preview. You know, We have a player profile. We have written two of them that we are going to be doing very soon here on the channel. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about some jerseys that I will say are my favorite in the NHL. Uh, we kind of update this list every single year, making sure that's updated and up to uh, standards. But yeah, that's going to be a fun video to talk about, talking about, you know, what jerseys do I like, what jerseys, you know, I think are the, are the best in NHL history. I also know that we're going to be doing more discussion about the Vegas Golden Knights. There is some um, good statistics I want to run by you about your Vegas Golden Knights. So I'll be uploading those soon. And then lastly, you know, when it comes to upcoming shows, I know we're going to be doing our minor league hockey report because it's coming up towards the end of that uh, end of that time. So at the beginning of each month, we talk about the Henderson Silver Knights, Savannah Ghost Pirates. I break down the statistics in Henderson and Savannah. And then if we have time, I get to mention the UNLV Rebels hockey team, which I get to watch at City National Arena. And they're doing a fantastic job. So those are some upcoming shows that you can definitely watch here on Vegas Hockey Hub. And I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. And this was Vegas Hockey Hub. And this was our recap show we do after every game. And until next time, I'm your host, Ian Rickelli. Continue watching hockey. Go support junior hockey. And go Knights. Go.